Hi, this is Chris Heller, Chief Real Estate Officer at Ojo Labs. And Jeremiah Taylor, Vice President of Real Estate Mortgage here at Ojo Labs. Today, we wanted to take a couple minutes to talk with you about some different scenarios that we're seeing pop up. Now, for all of us in real estate, you know, we know that the headlines are not creating any more certainty than they have in the past these days. And if anything, maybe they're creating a little bit less certainty for consumers. So Chris and I, you know, our teams and the agents that we interface with regularly are getting a lot of great questions from consumers. And we want to take this opportunity to help you understand how you can help the consumer think about the opportunities or challenges in today's market. And so Chris, I'll, I'll start with kind of the first thing that I'm seeing, which is like just yesterday, I saw there's this news about banks in China not letting people withdraw. And now the Fed's increasing rates again. Like, Sheesh, like, is this really the time that I want to be buying real estate? And I know a lot of consumers are, are just seeing this macro uncertainty and they don't know what to do. How, how would you help somebody? Yeah. So if you said that to me, Jeremiah, I'd say, you know, there's no doubt about it. Rates are higher than they were. Remember, you're not buying an interest rate or a mortgage, you're buying a house. So here's what's important. Here's how I think about things, Jeremiah, and, and some of my other clients think about things is if you can qualify and afford the payment, then really the decision is, do you remain renting a home or do you buy your own home? If you can afford and qualify, there's no reason not to buy a home now because here's what we know, rates go up and down. And when they go down, and when no one knows exactly when, we just know it will happen, you're gonna refinance. So that house that you've been living in, you've been enjoying, you've been building equity in, you're going to then at some point have a lower payment in the future than you do today. And that's a good thing. How, how, would, you, how would you respond to that, that same scenario? I think very similarly. The, for me, I always look at, you know, what's the customer's position? You know, where are they in life? Like the, the reality to me is the best houses are scarce, right? There's, a lot, there's always gonna be houses available. But there are always gonna be great houses available. And so the way I think about it, we make our personal family decisions is, is this the right house? Is this the house I want to live my life in? And it's really hard to put a price on that. And moreover, when you compare the difference between you know, a 3.5% rate and maybe a 5.5% rate, the difference in price that you would put on lifestyle, quality of life, et cetera, kind of becomes not as meaningful. And then as you said, in the future, I know that I, I'll likely be able to refinance or, or reduce my monthly carrying cost on that property. So let's talk about a, another scenario. Maybe, maybe I'll switch over to a seller, so someone who's, who's selling their home. Now, we know what sellers are doing is they're, they're looking at what happened in the past, right? What their neighbor's home sold for, what, their, what happened to their coworker or their relative who, who listed at one price and got you know, significantly more than they were listed for. And so now they're putting their home on the market. And the tendency is to want to have the same thing happen or to list it high. Good agents... We'll educate a consumer about the pitfalls of doing that. And weak agents, none of which are watching this video, will just list it at whatever price the seller wants. So how would you as an agent educate the sellers as to the pitfalls of, of listing too high? Yeah. I mean, the, the reality is the market's changed. You, all you have to do is open social media or your web browser, and you'll see the news article that help you understand that the market has changed. And so what that means is in the market we're coming out of, you would look at the last home that sold and you'd price incrementally above that and have the market help correct your price up. Meaning that if you priced a little too low, you would give so much interest that the market would bid you up to the right price. Well, in the market that we're coming into where demand is pulling back, it's so much more important that you price at the right price that is going to cause the home to sell. And if you really do it just right, the market is still going to move you up because that's the beauty of, a, of, of the free market is that if you price something too low, you're going to get multiple offers, you're going to have enough interest and it's going to help correct that and get you to the right price as long as you expose it to the appropriate amount of people. And so now when we're bringing property to market, we're no longer looking at what just sold. We're looking at that, but we're not pricing solely based on that. We're looking at who else is on the market today and, and through the eyes of a buyer, how would your house or the house we're about to put on the market compare in terms of value? And we want to be the best value on the market that a buyer would be looking for. 
And I think as a seller, you know, most people understand that and they can see that if their home is the best value, that's their best opportunity to generate massive interest, get multiple offers and all that. Yeah. I think a key point that you hit is the the primary fear that a seller has that if they price it lower, it's going to sell for less. And here's what we know about real estate and prices is it's, it's sort of like water. It's going to rise to its natural level. So if you put a home on the market, even in the toughest of markets, if you put on the market at a price that's that quote is too low, it will get multiple offers, right? In, in the worst markets we've ever had, foreclosures and other properties get multiple offers because they, you know, they price them below market and, and then they get bid up. And typically they get bid up to the highest possible price because in those scenarios, typically you're maximizing what you're going to get. I think another key component is educating the, the client on, because look, at sometimes they're going to listen to us and it's going to, we're going to price at the right price. And sometimes we're going to be right in the recommendation that, that we put out. And sometimes we're going to be wrong, or sometimes they're not going to listen to us. So equally as important is, is having the conversation, hey, in the next week to 10 days, regardless of which price we choose, this price or that price, we're going to know if it's the right price or not. And we're going to know that based on two things, the level of activity and the feedback. If we're not getting any activity, we miss the mark. If we're getting activity, but everyone's telling us it's priced too high compared to the other homes or their buyer is going in another direction or found a better value and no one's coming back for second or third looks, we're too high. So as important as our initial price is, What's more important is us being prepared to make an adjustment in a week to 10 days to get to the right price. Because Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the longer we're on the market in this environment, the less your home's going to sell for. And that means the less you're going to walk out for. And that's not what either one of us want. Yep. So Chris, I think, I think the thing you just touched on is really important. Now, what I'm seeing is there's some agents that, that they didn't see the change in the market coming. And they've got a listing where they didn't set these expectations with a seller. And now that listing is just sitting. They don't have showings. They certainly don't have second and third looks happening. Um, and, and maybe that agent feels a little bit stuck and they don't know how to proactively communicate. How, how would you handle that? Well, the first thing that happens when agents aren't sure how to communicate, they tend to avoid. So don't avoid the communication. When there's a problem, run at it. When there's something to communicate, over communicate. What I would do is... I don't want the seller just relying on my opinion or my intuition or anything else. I want to show them in black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up market stats. I'm going to say, hey, let's let's look at some of these some of these stats. A year ago, we had X amount of homes for sale. Today we have this amount of homes for sale. A year ago, we had this many homes under contract. Today we have this many contract. Or two months ago. Uh, we had you know this many homes for sale and this many under contract, and here's what's happened in the last two months. Or, you know, two months ago we had in the previous thirty days X amount of price reductions. In the last thirty days, we've had three X the amount of price reductions. So I just show them in black and white. Now, as as humans, we may not like the truth, but we want the truth. And we need the truth to be able to make good decisions. So then after showing them in, in the, you know, the, the data to, hey, here's what's really going on, then it gets back to that, that conversation. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we have two options. One is to you know, stay where we are. What's going to happen is the home's going to get market worn or stale, and you're going to make other properties look good. And the next ones that come on the market, they see yours isn't selling, so they're going to price lower. And you're going to help sell other houses, or we make an adjustment now. Get your home sold. Again, I know it doesn't feel good, and I know it's not going to feel good. I also know because I've been through this so many times. Six months from now, you're going to look back and say, "Wow, I'm glad we did what we did when we did it." Yep, that's absolutely right. And I think that the the thing some agents struggle with is it's. It's okay to be wrong. And I think a lot of times when you own that, people give you grace and, and running at that trouble and saying, hey, Mr. Mr. Seller, when we put the home on the market, the market was here. In the 30, 45 days, whatever, since we put the home on the market, we're seeing a seismic shift in the market. Look at all the new homes that came on. And so when we see this through the eyes of a buyer, we need to make a price improvement and a price change so that your home is the most attractive one 
And and I love how you said it. It's your home is the one that sells versus the being the, the home that helps your neighbor's home sell. All right. So let's look at the flip side of that. A buyer says, hey, I see the market softening up. I'm going to wait. Yep. Um, what's your conversation? Well, I think the first thing I do is just seek to understand. And I'd say, so Chris, you know, there's no doubt that the market is changing. And I'm just curious, how, how long would you be willing to wait? Our lease is up, you know, maybe the end of the year. Okay, sure. And by, between now and the end of the year, how much do you think prices might change? 5%, to maybe 10%? Well, yeah, I, th- I could see 5%. Okay. So let me ask this. If we, if we could find a property now and you could buy it today at, at 5% less than, than maybe what it's worth, wouldn't it make sense to just go ahead and do that? So you're building equity. You're not paying your landlord's mortgage. You're getting the tax benefits. You're doing everything else. And I think that that's, that's what we can do because that's the reality of the opportunity. There's more houses coming on the market every single month. We're seeing inventory change. Granted, the best properties always sell quickly and for great prices. But there are going to be some deals out there. And I think that's our job is to help you find one. Yeah. And I, and I think another, another approach I just thought of when, when you were doing that was, and it's, it's the same, the same, under the same vein of seeking to understand, another question or another way, direction you could take it is, well, Jeremiah, how long are you going to be in this next house? Well, long time. Seven years, 10 years? I don't know. Okay. So seven to 10 years. So let's fast forward seven to 10 years from now. Do you think your house and pretty much anything else you or I own is going to be worth more 10 years from now than it is today? I mean, I'd like to think so. Yeah. So typically, if when any type of you know, real estate, stock, anything over a 10-year period, usually has a, has a positive trajectory. So what happens in the next six months or the next 24 months or on year number five if you're going to be there for 10 years, does it really change anything? No. I mean, I, in fact, I'm probably better off if I, the sooner that I buy than the later. Yeah. And, and when interest rates get better, you refinance, you have a lower payment, and you're, you're building even more equity. So, Jeremiah, I understand that you know, trying to time the market is, is virtually impossible. No one knows for sure. But if this is a long-term decision, then let's make a long Term, have a long-term strategy to that decision, which is getting you to own real estate versus you know, helping your, your landlord create more equity. Yeah, I love that. And I think that you know, a lot of agents will look for a way to help move the consumer forward. And I want to be clear in these conversations, we're consultants as much as we're anything else. And had my answer not been seven to 10 years, had been 12 to 18 months, I think your answer probably would have been different. And it would have been, well, hey, I mean, Maybe this isn't the right time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I would have said, and if you would have said in twelve to eighteen months, and I and I would have said, well, what what happens in twelve to eighteen months? Go, well, Chris, we're, you know, my tour of duty is up here, and we're moving back home, or we're moving there, or whatever. I'd say, you know what? Given the uncertainty and given the market, I don't think you should buy. And I'd have no problem saying that. And then and I would follow up. And when you are ready to move. Let me do this. Let me connect you with a great agent where you're going to make sure that you get good advice so you can make a great decision based on that good advice. And that's someone who's going to appreciate the truth, appreciate the honesty, will be a referral source that I'm going to continue to stay in communication with. And I'm going to stay in communication with you because your 12 to 18 month plan may change. And you may say, you know, six months from now, when I'm following up with you, you may say, hey, are you still planning to move in about a year, year and a half? And you may say, you know what? Things have totally changed. My parents are moving out here now. We're staying here. And, and then the conversation is going to change. So yep. yeah, we are consultants. We always want to do what's best for the consumer. In order for us to do that, we have to ask the right questions. We have to ask enough questions and we have to communicate just like we would without being attached to the outcome, without trying to uh, drive a, a certain outcome, um, but just be there for them. And that's what sets the great agents apart from the others. So we could keep going and going. I hope this is helpful. We will do more of this. Let us know what scenarios you want us to talk about, what, what things you'd like us to share on video, and we will certainly do that. Thanks for watching. 